So this is an item I'm very excited about. This is a GW Instech oscilloscope, model GOS620. And I've wanted an oscilloscope for a long time for use on repairs and whatnot, but I just couldn't justify the price. Even on eBay, old used analog scopes like this cost $50 to $100 or more. And someone was selling this on my local Craigslist. They were moving, couldn't take it with them. So motivated seller, I was able to pick this scope up with two probes for $25, which is just a steal for an oscilloscope. But uh, searching on the internet, I couldn't find a whole lot of information out about this particular scope. So I thought I would just go ahead and um, do like a little bit of review of this tele uh, oscilloscope and we'll kind of clean it up. It's in pretty dirty shape and we'll also take it apart. We'll do a little bit of a tear down and look inside the oscilloscope and then to kind of finish things off we'll go ahead and check it and see if it's in calibration or if it needs any adjustments. So yeah, let's have some fun with an oscilloscope. So if you're new to oscilloscopes, like I pretty much am, they can be a little bit overwhelming at first. You see just all the knobs and buttons and controls on them, and it's definitely overwhelming if you don't know what's going on. But once you learn how an oscilloscope works, it's actually pretty easy to understand it. Um, they've basically broken the controls down into just a, a few sections if you understand what's going on. So you've got, they even label it vertical here. So for each channel, this is channel 1's vertical controls, everything inside this box. Here's channel 2, vertical inside this box. And I'll go into later on what they, that actually does. And then you have horizontal controls, everything in this box is horizontal. And then the final section here is trigger in this box. So really you just have vertical, horizontal, and trigger. And once you learn how to use those different controls, that's basically all you need to do to understand an oscilloscope. And there's a lot of buttons and controls, but it's pretty easy once you ha have a basic understanding of what's going on. So again, this is model GOS620, and it's by no means a, a fancy oscilloscope. It's, it's just a, a good average beginner scope. Um, it's a dual channel scope. It's got two different separate channels, and it has 20 megahertz resolution. So, you know, it, it's just a good beginner scope, and it'll definitely be useful for what I need. So let's go ahead and do a teardown of this scope. Disassembly is pretty easy. In the back here you've got two screws, and then three screws along the side, and three screws on the other side and then this top lifts off. Now the first time I went to lift mine off I got a bit of a surprise. Uh, someone had ran a piece of tape along the top here and also on the bottom to hold this front bezel onto the cover so the cover wouldn't come off. And so I just ran a razor blade through there and I eventually found out why they put that tape there. I'll, I'll get to that in a sec, but the cover comes off pretty easily. It's just a three-sided piece like that. And then so the bezel here you can just kind of take it off. And what had happened is, so on the inside of the cover here, there are, I think like six tabs, and several of these tabs along the top are broken off. So the cover doesn't stay on the scope by itself. And so they just literally, their solution was to tape it onto the frame as a way of holding it on there, which works, but I'll have to see if I can come up with a, a better permanent solution than that. And a, another, a uh, bit of advice here, a warning if you're taking this scope apart. So up here in the front, you've got a, a test point on the scope. And there's a little peg on the back here. And then there's a wire that comes through this tiny hole here. And the wire is not very long. I've already disconnected it. But when you take the bezel off, you have to carefully reach around and pull that wire off before you can fully remove this bezel. So don't just take the bezel off and pull, because there's going to be one wire connecting it on the back side. When you get it all taken apart, this is what you've got. First impressions, I was surprised by, there's a, not a lot, a whole lot in here, a lot of airspace. Um, it's definitely a newer design, so the boards aren't that big. It's also very clean in here, which probably due to the fact that there are no vents or fan or anything around here, so there's really no way for dust to get in here. But, you know, obviously you've got the CRT here, which um, if you're, 
new to oscilloscopes or old style TV tubes, you need to be careful there. It's potentially high voltage here and also some high voltage here. So definitely don't go poking around here while it's plugged in and turned on. And even when it's unplugged, it's the potential of safety here. So just be careful with what you're doing. So single board back here. I've got two long rods that come up. So those would be the focus and intensity knobs. So just that one board back there. And here's another rod there for the clunking power switch. But the main oscilloscope itself is just a dual board construction. There's this one and there's a second board. I don't know if I'll be able to get it. There's a second board upside down, inverted, up underneath that one. So it's just a two board. And it appears to be from about 1997. Found a single chip, I believe this one here, with a date code of 97 on it. And that would be consistent. All of the manuals I've seen online uh, have 1995 as the pr production date. So 1997 for a component would be consistent with that. Got a single probably voltage regulator or something mounted to the chassis there. Some back panel connectors. Obviously a big beefy transformer there. Yeah, all in all, it's in very clean, good condition, on the inside at least. Front's a little dusty, but we'll get that cleaned up. Yeah. A lot of pots and trimmers on there. Hopefully I don't need to adjust those, because I don't think I have the service manual for it, but we'll see. I got an unexpected surprise. So as I was cleaning the scope, turned it over, and I was looking more carefully at it, and I realized, so there are four screws in the corner here, and if you take those out, we have a bottom access panel. So now we can easily see and access everything on the bottom side of the scope. So here's that other board. You can see the switches in here. Kind of a complicated switch, but then I guess when you got the two-part switch with the inside and the out, and it clunks in and out like that, so it's going to have a lot to that switch. Again, a lot of capacitors and trimmers, resistors. Not a whole lot of ICs, though. Kind of interesting the way they just put this plastic standoff in here to retain these two heat sinks close together. Over here you can see the potentiometers for the intensity and focus knobs again. So, I don't know, kind of cool. I like the bottom access panel. Very easy to work on the scope should you need to. I'm about to reassemble the scope after cleaning, but first I want to make a few comments or notes here. First, here's that wire I mentioned for the frequency counter, and you can see it's not that long. And I did one thing here. It was just a metal plug and then it kind of rests in the center of that metal opening and that concerned me a little bit. I mean, it's it's obviously fine, but I didn't want there to be a chance of grounding out on the case, so I went ahead and just put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on there and that should uh, prevent a ground from ever happening there. And if you go to clean it, all of these knobs literally just pull off the front here with the exception of this center part here or that I should say this outer ring, there are two set screws on there and you're going to need a very tiny Allen wrench to get those off. But everything else, including these knobs here, these are it's a plastic knob on the outside that pulls off and then you got to do these two Allen screws to get this outer ring off. So that's that. And then I mentioned the, the broken clips so that the front bezel doesn't stay on. And what I did is top and bottom I drilled and tapped a single hole here into the metal and then I've, in the case, I drilled corresponding holes so that I can just put threaded screws through top and bottom and that'll hold it on. And I didn't want to to totally disassemble it so I very carefully put a towel here and I very carefully drilled and tapped this because it's going to drop metal shavings and obviously you don't want metal shavings in on the circuit board. You could create a short. so. Just very careful on that, and also as you're drilling through, 
if you've ever drilled through metal before, when you get through to the bottom, it pulls the drill bit down through. So you got to be careful that it doesn't pull it through and hit something on the backside. So I chose a spot very carefully that there wasn't there was enough clearance on the backside. I wasn't going to hit anything. So yeah, there we go. That's what it looks like after it's cleaned up. Let's put it back together now. Now that the oscilloscope's all cleaned up, put back together, let's go ahead and test it and see how close it is to being in calibration. Uh, fortunately, this particular oscilloscope has a little calibration point on the front here. If your particular scope doesn't have that, then you'll need a function generator. Now let's go ahead and check the scope and see how it's actually operating. So, obviously first you need to turn it on. And once it warms up, if you don't see the beam right away, then there's usually an intensity, which is how bright the beam is, and focus, which you can use to adjust that. And if you have a dual channel or multiple channel, you want to make sure it's set to, say, channel 1. And then you want to set channel 1 to, there'll be AC, DC, ground. You want to set it to ground, which basically means ignore this plug for right now. And then you can use the position knob. And you want to position it so the beam is pretty much in the center. And now you're ready to go ahead and hook up your probe. So connect that to channel 1. And then the other end, one of them have a little clip like this. We're just going to hook it on to the point right here. And now this test point on the front here, it says it's 2 volts peak to peak at 1 kilohertz. And it should be a square wave. So since we're going to be analyzing an AC waveform, we'll flip it up to AC. And the first thing you notice, I mean, you, you see it on screen, but it's kind of shifting left or right. And so what you need to do is you need to adjust what's called the trigger, and that's these controls up here. So first off, make sure you're triggering on channel 1. And then, so mode is auto, and that should be fine. And then there's this level, level knob here, and when you turn that up, you slowly turn it up until it should lock into place. Boom. And now we're, we're fixed in position. So now we can check. So again, this said 2 volts peak to peak. So you can look on here. So I've got it currently set to 1 volt per division. And if you look on here, these major lines, it's going down one and up one. So a total of 2 major divisions. So that's 2 volts, which is what we're supposed to be getting out of here. Now you can do other things, like you can come down here, so there's half a volt per, per division, so we should actually have four divisions to get the height of the two volts, and indeed we do see that. Um, something else to be mindful of, on a lot of oscilloscope probes, they have a 1x, 10x selector switch on here, and if you change that, it'll change the waveform. So there we've effectively divided it by 10. So if we divide it by 10, then we've got to come down here so divide by 10, but then we're at 1 tenth here, so it kind of brings us back to where we were. So the voltage looks pretty good on this one. Something else you want to check when you're working with the probes is the probe should have a tiny little screw hole right in here. And ideally your probe came with basically a plastic screwdriver like this. And you can't use a metal screwdriver because the capacitance of your fingers will travel through the screwdriver and mess it up. But So you can see here the waveform, it's not square. It kind of tapers up at the ends there. And so what you need to do is stick it in the hole and then as you turn it, it's kind of hard to see with my fingers there, but as you turn it, you're adjusting it. So you want to turn it to where you think it's perfectly square like that. And so there you've adjusted the capacitance on the, the probe. And the next thing you want to check then is the horizontal position of the probe. So again, it said it's a one kilohertz sine wave. So I'm actually going to turn this to half a millisecond per division on this dial here. And then I can use the position to kind of line it up. So it starts on a line goes down on a line and then comes to here. So it's two full lines and it's half a division. So that means it would be, so it's basically calibrating right at the one kilohertz that it should be for the full completion of the sine wave, which is what you want. So it actually looks like it's doing pretty good 
both horizontal and the voltage on the vertical. Uh, one thing I should mention, I didn't mention this earlier, um, both the horizontal has kind of a fine tune and the voltage has a fine tune here. And both these switches, if you turn them all the way, they click into place. It's harder to hear. You can't hear it on here, but it does click into place. If you're calibrating it, you're supposed to leave it in the clicked position. And this is only if you need to do fine tune adjust adjustments, you can take it out of calibration. But you're supposed to leave it in the clicked position. So, well, there you go. I mean, in this scope, it looks like it's, it's probably not perfect, but it's definitely close enough. And for 25 bucks, this is definitely a great buy. So I'm going to look forward to using this.